Michael Dolan is the Principal Research Scientist for the CSIRO. He joins us from Brisbane. Michael, welcome. Thank you. This sounds very exciting because hydrogen is billed as the next big thing for transport to power certainly um, our cars and the like. W what have you actually come up with that would allow the export of hydrogen? Uh, the, the technology we've developed is essentially a way of, of purifying hydrogen. Uh, when hydrogen is, is manufactured, it's, it's usually manufactured with some other byproduct. And until you can, can separate that out and purify the hydrogen, you can't really use it for things like, like transport. Is that that's uh, mostly ammonia, is it? Uh, well, ammonia is one of, one of the things from which you can manufacture hydrogen, um, as well as natural gas or other fossil fuels as well. So uh, all, all of those routes will produce some sort of byproduct, um, nitrogen, for example, or CO2, uh, which need to be separated out. So our technology allows that to be done quite efficiently and inexpensively, and in doing so can, can enable uh, different ways of using hydrogen. So, Michael, we, we see those images of the, the giant uh, liquid natural, natural gas um, carriers carrying a bulk um, to, to Asia and the like. Are you, you foreseeing a day when we'll see hydrogen in those large tankers? No, the, the approach is a, li is a little bit different. Um, one of the, the great problems with hydrogen is that it's quite difficult to transport over long distances because it has such a low, low density. Um, ammonia is actually a, a very nice way of, of transporting hydrogen from point A to point B, be it from Australia to Japan, for example, because it actually has a higher hydrogen density than liquid hydrogen, which sounds counterintuitive, but it is the case. The technology that we've developed uh, can be applied at the point of use where we convert ammonia back into high purity hydrogen for use in, in a transport fleet, for example. Just as far as hydrogen is uh, goes as far as powering vehicles and the like is concerned. Explain to us why uh, people are so excited by it. Well, I guess hydrogen is the ultimate clean fuel. The only emission arising from the use of hydrogen is water. Um, you can also manufacture hydrogen completely renewably. And this one, you know, one of the great shortcomings of renewable energy production is that it's usually in a form of elect electricity which needs to be used either where you make it or put into the grid. But it doesn't really allow you to, to transport it over long distances, such as from Australia to Japan. So Australia has a huge renewable energy resource, but the really big en renewable energy markets are going to be in places like Japan, Korea and Europe. So we need a way to get that renewable energy over there, and hydrogen in the form of ammonia uh, is one way that we can potentially meet that demand. Yeah, there has been some criticism that Australia has been lagging, essentially, as far as hydrogen is concerned, its involvement with it. So does this very much put it back in the game? Look, look it, it certainly has. And you drew that analogy with, with, um, with LNG. I think uh, with the, the advances of, of the technology around hydrogen production in recent years, um, th those prices have, have, have plummeted. We see, we've seen that with solar PV and we're see, seeing it with the other technologies involved in this technology chain. Um, that's, that's making renewable hydrogen really much more competitive than it used to be. Uh, and in doing so, it can potentially open up a whole new market for, of industry for Australia. In fact, we could almost become an energy superpower for renewable energy, given the resources that we have, as long as we can get that energy to market. Indeed. Um, and can you put a time frame on it before you actually see uh, exports using your technology? Uh, we're currently trialling our technology at the pilot scale here in Australia uh, during the next 18 months. Um, after that, we'll be looking to do some demonstrations in places like Japan and Korea, where we expect the first market for the technology to be. Um, one, once that technology is proven, then there's really no technical barriers to the industry. It then becomes comes an, an issue of, of government policy and investment to make this industry happen. Michael Dolan from the CSIRO. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.